Good morning, everybody. This is episode two of the Off Topical Podcast. My name is Gardner, and are we headed for a Linux without Linus? Plus, a happy ending to the Overwatch player banned for playing on Linux. Valve open sources their VR tech demo Moondust, and is Microsoft really the biggest open source contributor? Let's get to the good stuff. First up, the Overwatch player who was banned for playing on Wine. Now, Reddit user Ingenious Docs was banned from Overwatch for playing in Wine. Now, he speculated that it was because he enabled async uh, when using DXVK. But um, another user reported that he actually was not using async, and he actually got banned as well. So that leads to the question, what actually happened here? Like, why were both of these players banned? And I think that the reason is that Blizzard has a tradition of being hostile towards Linux and especially Wine players. Uh, they, they banned a Diablo 3 player a couple years ago and refused to give him a refund and he never got unbanned. So that, may, that leads me to believe that this was uh, a targeted attack. He spent several days trying to get unbanned, and uh, Jason Evangelo, uh, I hope that I pronounced that right, from Forbes.com actually shed light on this by writing about this on Forbes.com and, uh, and actually like shedding light on this to the wider gaming community. I feel like that might be why Blizzard has a change of heart here, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but it, it is nice to see that his ban was actually overturned, and uh, it's really nice that there's a happy ending here. Um, but I want to know what you think. Is this a happy ending? Hit me up on Twitter at the Linux Gamer, or you can leave a comment on the YouTube version of this uh, podcast. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Next up, Valve have open sourced their VR tech demo, and and this is really cool stuff here. So they have released uh, Moon Dust as free software it's licensed under the bsd which some people might argue is not free software exactly but you know it's open source anyway uh they use they are intending this to help developers to more fully utilize their knuckles prototype controllers uh and it's built interestingly enough upon unity engine 2018.2 that's interesting that valve is using unity engine and not source 2 uh, but I can understand why they're doing that because Unity Engine is, is a very popular engine in the game developing scene. From their GitHub page. This is the source code and assets of the Knuckles tech demo. The project has been updated to Unity 2018.2 and uses the new Steam VR input system. It is meant to only work with Knuckles EV2 and EV3 controllers. Nearly all assets are under the three clause BSD license with the exception of things in the assets slash portal folder. Those assets were taken from portal one and portal two and should not be used or distributed in your own projects. They are included to complete the source assets for the project. That's really cool. Um, you can find out more on the Steam community. There's a link. There's a link to this GitHub repo in the show notes. Uh, you can find the show notes on Patreon uh, available to everybody. But I want to know your thoughts. Is, is this a good move? I mean, I personally think that this is great news. Um, I mean, seeing any company release their project as open source is nice, but it especially makes sense for Valve because Valve are one of the most uh, visible champions of Linux gaming, and uh, it, it just makes sense for them to be releasing more and more of their stuff as open source software and i'd love to see more of this i'd love to see parts of the steam client open sourced and and you know we've already seen uh proton as an open source project now granted it was forked from one but still i mean that's the kind of direction i'd love to see valve go in i can put up with their let it be attitude on the storefront if they are giving back to the developer community giving back to the free open source software community that has allowed them to build the amazing things that they have built. I, I, I'm very conflicted about Valve. I love them. I love to hate them. I love them. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's move on. Microsoft. Are they really the biggest open source contributor? Now, I found this as a, uh, as a tweet. The, a link to this article came from Chris Anasizic. Uh, at CRA on Twitter. Uh, 
this is a fascinating article. I, I, the question that was posed by the article, which was posted on September 13th, is Microsoft really the most prolific open source contributor? And, and they like to claim that they are. Microsoft does. But that's only by some measures. If you're counting by how many like uh, developers on GitHub are actually like report themselves as mi Microsoft employees, then maybe that's true. But a writer at Tech Republic used GitHub's API to pull public data of user accounts. That's like two million users. Now keep in mind that some developers don't use, uh, don't, don't list their employer info on their profiles. And uh, also they excluded developers who didn't push more than 10 commits uh, in 2017. But this is what they found. And, and this really, it's really striking. If you count known active contributors, Microsoft is way out in front. But what happens if we measure the percentage of employees who actively contribute, balancing total employee numbers against total GitHub contributors? Suddenly, the podium finishers look very different. That's a quote from the article. Number one, at 39.9%, we have Mozilla. Number two, Pivotal at 18.27%. Number three, SUSE at 17.67%, Red Hat number four at 12, Unity Technologies at just about 13%. That's weird. I just noticed that Unity Technologies is should be higher up on the list. Uh, Unity Technologies at 12.9% and Red Hat's at 12.68%. Then we have Square at 11, uh, ThoughtWorks at 8.25. Uh, Shopify at 7%, which is really cool, ESRI, and then at number 10, we have Microsoft at 3.1%. Got them. Some surprising numbers here to be sure. I mean, the fact that Unity Technologies is at number 5, I mean, that's, that's shocking to me. If you actually look into what Unity does, though, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily be that surprised. I mean, they contribute to, you know, Radeon, uh, they contribute to SDKs, to Mono, uh, they contribute to a bunch of stuff that, that their technology is built on. So that, that's actually uh, really cool. SDL, I think, too. Um, uh, where is SDL? It should be somewhere here. I'm just guessing at SDL, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, that's a very interesting article, and it kind of takes the wind out of Microsoft's uh, open source sales, if you hear what I'm saying. Um, anyway, there's, it's a fascinating read. You can check out the article in the show notes on Patreon, patreon.com slash the Linux Gamer. That's available to everyone to read. Um, then we have Linus uh, is taking some time off from kernel maintainership. And... Uh, <sighs> This is an interesting story for sure. I usually don't talk about Linus and the kernel drama that goes on. It's unprofessional. And, you know, Linus has realized that. This is this is something that I have struggled with talking about before because I'll get comments where people are like, hey, man, you should talk about Linus, you know, going in on one guy or another. And it's like, that's drama, man. That's not the kind of stuff I want to talk about. Like, I like talking about cool technology and that's what Linux is, right? But right now, why is, you might be wondering, if, if you haven't heard the news already, why is Linus taking time off? Well, let me quote him exactly, because I want his words to speak for themselves. This is my reality. I'm not an emotionally empathetic kind of person, and that probably doesn't come as a big surprise to anybody, least of all me. The fact that I then misread people and don't realize for years how badly I've judged a situation and contributed to an unprofessional environment is not good. This week, people in our community confronted me about my lifetime of not understanding emotions, my flippant attacks in emails that have been both unprofessional and uncalled for, especially at times when I made it personal. In my quest for a better patch, this made sense to me. I know now that this was not okay, and I am truly sorry. That's, that's kind of unprecedented for Linus. He doesn't like to apologize ever. But back to his words. The above is basically a long-winded way to get to the somewhat painful personal admission that, hey, I need to change some of my behavior, and I want to apologize to the people that my personal behavior hurt and possibly drove away from kernel development entirely. 
I'm going to take some time off and get some assistance on how to understand people's emotions and respond appropriately. Now, I don't have a whole lot to say about this. I mean, Linus historically has been quite verbally abusive towards people uh, and and maybe that's his personality you know he doesn't see, he seems to be apologizing here and it seems truly uh coming from the bottom of his heart i mean it really does he's b- having an introspective moment what i do have to talk about though is the nothing news that followed it now <laughs> I'll probably get some heat for saying this, but I wanted to weigh in on the code of conduct debate. Personally, I take no exception with the text of the code of conduct. Uh, Behaving in a way contrary to it would get you fired from any professional situation. I mean, the fact that the Colonel team has decided to implement this new code of conduct around the time Linus is having his introspective moment is kind of like, yeah, obviously. And it really amounts to nothing news to me as far as I'm concerned. The The argument that it was written by an SJW, SJW, or that it will be abused, frankly, that's foolish to me. I don't know. Linus has always been this curmudgeon meme in the community, but like it's really been detrimental the way he behaves. It's always been detrimental. And he even admits it in his, in his post where he announced that he's taking some time off. So I don't understand where this, the, the uh, exception is coming from to, to the code of conduct. I really don't. I don't see it. And I've heard people say, you know, that it's the SJW, that, that it came from an SJW, the, the original code of conduct. But, but it's not a very restrictive thing. It's like, hey, be a professional. I'll read it to you, actually. Let's read the actual code of conduct. This is the meat of the code of conduct. In the interest of fostering an open and welcoming environment, we as contributors and maintainers pledge to make participation in our project and our community a harassment-free experience for everyone, regardless of age, body size, disability, ethnicity, sex characteristics, gender identity or expression, level of experience, education, socioeconomic status, nationality, personal appearance, race, religion, or sexual identity, or orientation. The one thing that they left out there was political affiliation. That's the only exception I have with that. The, but the, that's the meat of it. And, and to me, there's absolutely nothing objectionable in the text of this code of conduct. Nothing at all. I read that uh, Stallman was asked what he thought about this, and he said that he doesn't like restrictive code of conduct. But if you look at like some other community's code of conduct, like, for example, Arch's code of conduct, it's enormous. It's like 10 f- pages long. It has five total topic areas and very specific ways of how you are supposed to uh, communicate on the forums and how you're supposed to like correct people and and how to be respectful and stuff. This is a very short and precise uh, code of conduct. It doesn't seem that controversial to me. I don't know. (laughs) I really don't know. I mean, this is not political in my opinion just do the work and be excellent and act like a professional and there won't be an issue i just don't see there being an issue i don't know i don't know guys (laughs) that's my hot take on this latest kerfuffle i don't normally talk about stuff like this because you know it's really i don't think that it's going to affect me i don't think it's going to affect the uh the the quality of the kernel i don't think that there's much debate about this code of conduct among kernel developers really this has turned into a twitter war if you want to get outraged and up my engagement and do free marketing for me you can call me an idiot on twitter feel free uh at the linux gamer that's my handle on there or you can leave a comment on the youtube version of this podcast it helps me out no matter what you say (laughs) but if you believe in the work that i do or you want to get exclusive access to the audio feed of this podcast head over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamer and support the show there. This is the Off Topical Podcast. I've had a lot of fun, and thanks for listening. <laughs>